And we're going to talk about several things related to the aspects of faith that will help you grow tonight. And here's what 1 John 5, 4 says. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. Look at somebody and say, this is the victory. This is the victory. That overcomes the world. It is our faith. our faith. Even our faith. Look at somebody and say, it's faith. That faith is tenacious. Faith is bulldog. Faith doesn't let go. It has aggressiveness to it. It is fierce. It's a force. There is no way that God will turn his back on tenacious, unyielding, unbreakable, fortified, bulldogish, bold, uncompromising, fierce, forceful, aggressive, violent faith. Being fierce and violent in faith will secure God's attention for a supernatural intervention. Let's say that. Let me say that again. Being fierce and violent with faith will secure God's attention for supernatural intervention. Will secure God's attention for supernatural intervention. It's not theoretical. It is not religious, but we come into a dynamic faith, a living faith that produces results. At every point where you secure supernatural intervention, violent faith will be in operation. At every point that you will have an intervention from God supernaturally, your faith will have a violence to it. There will be violent faith in operation. Forceful, fierce, tenacious, undeniable faith. And I'm not talking about emotions or how we feel or whether we shed a tear or whether we yell or scream. Those aren't even important. They're not even what we do. Because emotions have nothing to do with faith. And at every point where you secure supernatural intervention, violent faith will be in operation. What is faith? What is faith? Well, we know the, the biblical de definition found in the Hebrews 11.1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence of things we cannot see. We know that definition. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We also know last week that I said this. Faith is the currency, the modicum of exchange within heaven. It's what we exchange for the things that we want from God. Let me give you some more definitions of faith. Here's another one. The Bible says that faith is a mystery. Now, that sounds like it might be a little off. But here's the scripture. It says this in 1 Timothy 3, 9. Holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. So faith is a mystery. But again, we're looking at language. That, that word mystery there does not mean it's mysterious or unknowable. That it's something we can obtain. The word mystery here is the word secret. Holding the secret. Of faith the key faith is the secret ingredient in the special sauce we hold that mystery that secret the secret of God is in the secret of, of us being a world changer is faith faith is the secret ingredient to you receiving from God what kind of faith bold tenacious Violent, forceful, fierce faith. Faith is not head ideology, but a mystery, a secret of the kingdom. Faith is that secret. Faith is the mystery or secret or key that empowers us to gain mastery over situations. In other words, faith is the mystery for mastery. Faith is the mystery for us to master our environment. For us to be having, have mastery over our circumstances. What business is it that we could not succeed at if, it wasn't, if, we, if we had faith? Tell me what, what is it that you could see in your life that could not be done if you didn't believe? If you believe, how many things are possible? 
So anyone that tells me that their business can't succeed or they can't overcome or they can't win or they can't succeed or you don't know where I've come from. No, you don't know the key. You don't know the mystery for the mastery. Faith is the mystery. What, is the, what else is faith? Faith is that which overcomes the world. You have faith. You have the power of God. God's power to overcome. Faith is a mystery. The key, the component, the secret that empowers us to gain mastery over situations. I remember when Stephen was born. I still remember those days and how that, 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 that faith came into action with little Stephen. Stephen was, was in the womb. When we went to the hospital, the, the nurses couldn't find him. Uh, his heartbeat was gone. Things had gone wrong. They had tried everything to wake him up, tried everything to move him around. Several, uh, several uh, minutes had gone by, maybe 20 minutes had gone by. And, and when we had first gotten there, we didn't know they had already called the doctor. And the doctor was en route to get there because there was an emergency. We didn't really know that until about 20 minutes later when they were telling us, well, we've decided we're going to have to go in. There's something wrong. Well, that's a kind of scary thing. Anybody ever been there? And basically what they were telling us is that was Stephen was dead in the womb. Stephen wasn't alive. He wasn't living. But I had bulldog, tenacious, unwielding, unyielding, unbending faith. God said my son was supposed to live. I know that. And I purposely and purposed in my heart. It, let's tell you the truth. This is going to sound terrible. If I had to raise him from the dead, he wasn't dying. I mean, that's, that was what was going on. There was something in my... But I remember calling up, and I called the church there in Lakeland and got a hold of some of the ministers, and they, they, there was things they told us to do. I remember sitting down at the head of the bed, and I began to sing over my wife. One of the ladies said, God told her we should, I should sing a, a lullaby. So I started, the only lullaby I knew, I didn't know any. The only one I knew is, yes, Jesus loves me. And so I sat over Amy and serenaded the whole operating room. They decided to do a C-section. I remember the car racing up, the doctor jumping out, running in. They threw me in a gown, and I'm sitting in there within minutes because they're going to pull out this baby right now. And I started singing, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. When he pulled that baby out, I saw my faith come into existence. I'll never forget that doctor said, well, there's nothing wrong with this baby. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Faith. Faith. Brian. I remember walking in the store. We were with the Edmonds. And we were walking around in Target. And you know, Vince and Megan, we were walking around with them in Target. As I'm walking around in Target, Brian had come over to me. I put my hand on his face. And when I did, I felt that lump on the side of his face. Huge lump in his jaw. I felt that huge lump, and I was worried, but I knew in my heart, Jesus is the healer, and Jesus will heal my son. The next day, we went to the doctor's office, to the dentist's office, and the dentist confirmed our, uh, what would, any, would be anyone's worst fears. He said, this is beyond me. He took the x-rays. He said, I can't do anything for this. You need to go immediately to the oral surgeon, immediately to the oral surgeon. And you need to go and sit down. Well, anyway, within 30 minutes, we were at the oral surgeons with the x-rays in hand. And when we went in, they took another set of x-rays. By the time we had sat down in the chair, that bump had shrunk. I'm not going to be denied. There has to be a bulldog tenaciousness. But let me ask you the question, why the gap? Why is there a gap between I can believe God for a headache and I have a problem with raising the dead. I tell you a story about, and, and, and this is the thing, you know the story. Brian's mouth, the doctor virtually told us there was a tumor, something was wrong. And everybody's mind would do the same thing as ours did. What is this? Thinking that it could possibly be cancer. But knowing that Jesus is the healer. That God's bigger than any cancer, any disease, any situation, any, any, any shortcoming in, my, in our life. Somebody know what I'm talking about? 
Well, anyway, he didn't, they went in, couldn't find anything. The thing was, there was an open space in his jaw where something was, and it was gone. Amen. They went in, opened it up to do a, a, an exam inside of his mouth. I would have said no, but my wife said yes. Amen. So, because I knew it was over, but she wanted, the doctor said, you need to go and let us look at it. A week later, they went in and did a little biopsy in there. When they went in to do that biopsy, his mouth, they did oral surgery. His mouth was completely healed, completely normal. Today, there's nothing there. My son is well. My son is healed. There's nothing wrong with him. He is totally well. Amen. Why the gap? Why is it that we can believe God for a toothache or we can believe God for a headache, but we have a problem with our marriage? Or we have a hard time with our business? No, there's no gap. It's the same tenacious, violent force of faith that causes all of these things to happen. You may not need this today. You may be sitting here, but I pray that this grows in your spirit. That what I'm saying to you tonight will so elementally become part of your thinking that when you are up against it, because I know I've lived long enough to know every person in this room, young and old, is going to get to a point where they don't have the answer for something. You're going to get to that moment when you don't have the answer. When you're standing there and there ain't enough money in the checkbook. When the lawyer has come and said you're getting sued. When the doctor says there's no hope. Every person in this room will stand at that moment. Because we fight the devil and we fight a fight of faith. And the world, the flesh, and the devil are always attacking us. Young man, young woman sitting there today and the world looks like it's your oyster. I never have understood what that meant. I guess it has to do with the pearls supposed to be inside. The world is your oyster. Somebody say amen. And it looks great before you. But there'll be a moment when there's a business deal that you need God and that only God can do it. Get what I'm talking about. You may be sitting on the other side of a desk. And the only thing that will help you get through the moment is the faith on the inside of you that is fierce, tenacious, non-turning, unending faith. That is singleness and bulldog type faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Those are just some experiences that we had where faith, the mystery of faith, the secret of faith caused us to be masters over the situation. You got to listen to your spirit. What's another thing? What's another description of faith? Listen, you got to have some degree of violence to possess any of your possessions, to be a possessor of your possessions. It's important to know how to generate that kind of faith. Faith is not a strategy. It is a spiritual force. Faith must, be, must stand in the power of God. It is not a mental ascent. It is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 says, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but by the demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of the Holy Ghost. Faith is a power. It's a force. It's a force. Faith is a force. Faith is spiritual empowerment for victory. Look at somebody and say, faith, faith. is spiritual empowerment spiritual. for victory. You are empowered by faith to overcome. According to 1 John 5, 4, we said we overcome the world by our faith. What's well, another definition of faith? It is an unstoppable force in the realm of the spirit. Whatever cannot prevail against God cannot prevail against faith in God. Whatever cannot prevail against God cannot prevail against faith in God. Faith will accomplish its mission. Let me say this again. Whatever cannot prevail against God. Whatever cannot prevail against God cannot prevail against faith in God. Faith is a power, it's a force. It is that demonstrative faith. Let me go on, I'm almost done. Let me finish up. I'll, I'll quicken it up a little bit. You can't challenge God's authority. So you can't challenge faith in God, because what faith in God does is tap into the power of God. <laughs> Come on. 
faith taps the power of God. Listen, another way, let me put it this way. Faith is the transformer. Faith is that which converts the power of God from the Word of God. Faith takes the Word of God and turns it into the power. Isn't that great? Faith is what trans... Think about a transformer. The power is there. But that transformer brings it to your house. And faith is that which takes the Word of God and converts it to the action or the power of God. Oh man, that's just good stuff right there. That empowerment is what results in victory. That's why I said we've been empowered to prosper. Look at somebody and say, you're empowered. See, that's the word. That's the word tonight. Tonight, the Word of God says that you and I were empowered to prosper so that He could establish His kingdom upon the earth. Isn't that what it says? You and I were empowered to prosper, made to be wealthy, made to overcome, made to have exceeding blessing. You were empowered to prosper. That's God's Word. Faith transforms what you heard in the Word to what you experience in your life. It is the thing that gives you the power to be empowered to that victory. What kind of faith am I talking about? Violent faith. You can't settle for sitting at the table hoping you have enough money to pay the next bill. Thinking if we miss a check, baby, we going under. That is not where God has ordained for you and I to live. Faith turns the word into power. Listen to this. Faith is a fierce force. Number six, faith is a fierce force. And again, he entered into Capernaum in that day and he said, so and so forth. He said this. This is about the roof. They opened up the roof. Jesus saw their faith. Listen. A great man of God said this. And I want you to write this down. Get this in your mind. Remember this because it will be a transforming word to you. Satan is not a gentleman. A great man said this. Satan is not a gentleman, so there is no way to engage him softly and have victory. <laughs> He's not passive. He goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If you think you're going to win a victory by passively approaching the devil, you will not win. You have got to come at the devil like a lion from the tribe of Judah. You've got to awaken the lion that, that's on the inside of you. You've got a lion living in you. When you got born again, you became part of the tribe of the Lion of Judah. You became a brother. You became the son. You became an heir to the promise. There is a lion on the inside of you. The lion is the greatest of beasts. That's why God was clear about it. There's, there's a lion in us. And faith will rise up out of us like the lion that is within us. Glory to God. It's a fierce force. Satan is not a gentleman, so there is no way to engage him softly and have victory. You must make a demand on the situation and forcibly apply your faith to receive results. Faith is not a motivational talk. It isn't mere theory. We're talking about empowerment, not just encouragement. You don't need to leave here today and just be encouraged. Well, God's for me. You need to understand, this isn't just a talk. I'm not just here communicating an idea. This isn't some theory. 
This is the power of God. It is the release of God's power for our healing, for our deliverance, for our prosperity and faith. Each one of us having been given a measure of faith. You don't have to live beneath what God said you can live in. Something should rise up in you. And a tenaciousness, a fierceness, a violent force should be rising in you. Number seven, faith is not religious logic. It is a spiritual weapon. Listen to Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith we can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It is something we can take. Does anybody understand what I just said? It has, it has, it has volume to it. It has possessibility to it. There is, there is a thing called faith. It is not theory, but a weapon that we can pick up. Tangibly take. Take the shield. Take the shield of faith. And quench the fiery darts. How many know there are fiery darts? But we have a weapon. The shield of faith. So that the weapon of our warfare can defeat the weapon of the enemy. Somebody say amen. amen. It's a force that can be handled. Can be touched. You can take it. Faith is a spiritual force that guarantees your victory over unseen forces. It guarantees because if you can quench all the fiery darts, it guarantees. Amen. Amen. You're going to have to get the tape. What else is it? Faith is the master key to a world of unlimited possibilities. John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me in the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Faith is that which opens up the world of unlimited possibilities. Unlimited possibilities. Realize that Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do also and greater. Your limited destiny is actually unlimited through faith. Let, let me say that again. Your limited destiny becomes unlimited through faith. To be pressed down, stagnated, afflicted, destroyed, destroyed, dis disheartened is not God's plan for you. Amen. You are far beyond that. Whatever could not hold Jesus is not supposed to hold you. <laughs> oh my. Whatever could not hold Jesus is not supposed to be able to hold you Amen. oh my goodness Amen. oh my goodness you must get angered enough to secure a change God's expectations are full more far more than where we are living number nine every situation can be reversed by faith every situation can be reversed by you say really how about Lazarus? He was dead four days. The Bible says Jesus came and they said he stinks. And Jesus, through faith, Lazarus came forth from that grave. Every, no matter how far it's gone, no matter how bad it is, every situation can be reversed by faith. I heard a story recently in Africa, in Nigeria. A child was hit by a car at about you know, five or six in the morning, and the mother took the baby dead to the hospital. The very first hospital said she, the baby was dead. There was no way this little girl was going to live. The mother took it to the next hospital, claiming that God told her it was going to live. God said that's her child. The prophet, a, a, a man of God, had prophesied she was going to have children. They were going to live. And she said, this year, that baby's not going to die. Went to the second hospital. At the second hospital, the doctor said that baby was dead. She took it from the third hospital on the back of another lady, carrying it on, on the lady's back, prophesying all the way to the third hospital of it life. Life in that baby. 
When they got to the third hospital, the third hospital declared that baby dead. As a matter of fact, the third hospital said that she was rude, that she wouldn't listen to anybody, and she needed to go ahead. The baby was dead. She took that baby from the third hospital at about, uh, I think they said it was six or seven at night, to the home. She laid that baby down on the couch, slept beside that baby all night long, having been told three times that baby was dead at 5 a.m. The next morning, that baby sneezed and came back to life. The lady got up and testified in the church. That's how I know the story. But she testified. It's out on video. She testified of how God healed her baby. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how far it's gone. Every situation is reversible. Reversible by faith. Look at somebody and say, ain't nothing too big for God. So why the gap? So why the gap? Why is your situation so big that you haven't overcome it? So why the gap? Today I tell you stories of my own experiences. I sat in the, in the seat at the doctor's office and they told me I had nodules, that I would have to have them removed by surgery, that my voice was corrupted and, cor and, and that I had these, these huge uh, uh, things on my vocal cords. I couldn't talk for two weeks, couldn't even say a word. Had to write and whisper and that's all I could do for two weeks. Doctors had told me, you need to go see a specialist. I remember driving to the ear, nose, and throat specialist on my way, just worshiping God silently because I couldn't say a thing. I remember getting there, pulling up in my car. My throat was sore. I couldn't say anything. I had to write everything down when I went into the lobby and at the desk. And I believed God all the way to the chair. I remember him numbing my throat and sticking that scope down my throat. I couldn't say anything. There were nodules. Everything said there were nodules. But I'll never forget when he said, I can see where something was, but it ain't there now. Amen. He took that scope out of my throat, and that instant I could talk, and I knew Jesus had healed me because Jesus is my healer. So you got to understand, when I get up here and preach this stuff, I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to everyone, including myself. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to preach myself right into victory. I'm going to confess myself right into victory. I'm going to come right out over the top. You, I'm telling you, my miracle is right in front of me. I'm about to open the door on the blessings of God. This thing's about to turn around. I'm not about to give up now. I'm not about to quit. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. God is my healer. God is my deliverer. God is my blesser. Glory to God. Oh, I wish somebody in here would just get that inside to the point that God, I've got to have it. We're told about the story of the unjust judge where the lady went. Now, God is certainly not the unjust judge and we don't correlate it this way. But we know, we know this. It was telling us there was something to her being aggressive, something to her being violent, that she continued and continued and continued until she got her answer. We're not trying to twist God's arm. We're not trying. But there must be a tenacious fierceness, veracity to us that says, I cannot be denied. I'm not willing to give up. I will not quit until I'm in heaven. And then I'll have the greatest blessing of my life. The worst thing the devil can do to me is send me to heaven. And while I'm on this earth, God said, I am the head. Oh, man. Oh, glory to God. Would you get it? God, let them get it. I am the head. I am above. I am an overcomer. I am empowered to prosper. Glory to God. I am blessed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I have a spiritual force, the force of faith to overcome the world. To overcome the world and everything in the world. Glory to God.